Good morning, everybody. Hey, hi. Oh my goodness, there's so much going on in the chat. Hi, I am Becky from Power Tools with Thread, and you are in the Situation Room. This is our uh, Monday through Friday morning virtual quilt retreat from 7 to 8 a.m., and you've got a little bit different uh, view of my sewing room this morning. I'm going to be doing something kind of different here. I am getting some samples ready to take to Houston. I'll be at the Houston Quilt Festival November, oh my goodness, a second through the fifth, I think it is. I'll be on the brother stage in the All Brands booth, Village, <laughs> from um, at 1130 each day. But I will have my own spot there. So please pop in and say hi. I'd love to meet you and we could get pictures. And I think my husband's going to be there playing around with the print moda. So uh, if you are new here, this is not uh, a day that we do any kind of giveaways or anything like that. We just kind of hang out and start our day with each other. There is a virtual kitchen on the other side of the studio. I see Scotty Dog has got some uh, sausages and eggs, and people have brought in banana nut bread. And of course, there's always hot coffee. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Made by Margie. I see you went to Joanne's and dropped a little bit of money. <laughs> Good for you. It's important to support the economy, right? That's what I say. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Some of you have retreats coming this week. I know it's going to be so exciting. So I'm over here in this corner this morning because I've got to get a sample. I'm working on a sample for Houston. And um, one of the things that I absolutely love to do is to automate the applique process for quilting. But I do it by using an embroidery machine. So this morning, I'm going to take you through my process of how I uh, simulate, I guess, hand stitching. So uh, we're going to have a really good time here. I see we've got a newbie from Lampasas. Hello, my neighbor. <laughs> East Texas. Yeah. All my Texas girls are in the house. So, uh, oh, this is okay. The, the Canton Quilt Show is this weekend. So-and-so fabric store will be having a store-wide 30% off sale. Thank you, Donna, for sharing that. So, so-and-so actually I, I did a little interview with this lady and took my camera around her store. She's one of the oldest or most, I think she's the original Moda fabric shops in Texas. And um, she is just a character. Y'all, I think she's in her upper 80s and still going strong. So you've, you've got to know where the shop is in order to get there. But she carries mostly Moda fabrics. And if she's having 30% off, you need to get over there. It's at so-and-so in Canton, Texas. Plus, stop and see all the quilts, right? Oh, Keith, uh, Patty says that Keith can hang out with Sarah Vester. She's demoing print Moda for all brands. Well, good. Yeah, so we all hang out in the same booth, you guys. But that booth is about the size of a city block. It's ginormous, <laughs> big red tents. So that's where I will be. So I am working on Nancy Halverson's uh, On Wander Lane. And this is the December block for Mistletoe Crossing. Okay, And I am making this placemat right here. And I want to take this with me to the show. I have some other stuff that I've done of hers over the years. So those samples will go with me too as well as my chicken salad quilt. But I wanted to get this going and show you guys how quick and easy it is. I'm not going to be using any software today. All I'm going to do today is where it says Merry Christmas to all. See that? It says Merry Christmas to all on there. The idea is for you to hand stitch that. Well, I'm not doing that. <laughs> So some folks had mentioned that maybe I could put this image into in Brilliant Stitch Artist 2 and let it just automatically make the letters. Well, hold on. This is annoying. My, hold on. Let me get my 
luminaire to uh, go through its initial sequencing. So if I take a picture of this and pop it into a brilliance, the problem is you can't, this is the pattern right here. Okay. And the problem is you can't make a square out of it. So I can't take a picture and then crop it, you know, because I've got hat and whatnot in the way if it was to be a rectangle. So the easiest way to do this is to pop it into um, something like the Brother Luminaire. This is the Brother Luminaire XP3. It's been upgraded. It started as an XP1. It's been upgraded to the XP3. Or you might have the uh, the Baby Lock Solaris. Uh, Brother Luminaire has my design center and Disney and the Solaris has IQ design without Disney. <clears throat> so let me show you guys what I stitched last night. I was playing with this. I've never stitched a Disney design out of here. Look how cute this is. He's got some puckers, not a fan. That may have been because it was um, in a magnetic hoop and it was such a huge, huge, uh, heavy, heavily satin stitched design. So I've got some, I got a thread that needs trimmed here. Get that. I keep all of my scissors and tools in a tray for the embroidery machine. So everything is together and not floating around because they do that. <laughs> Oh my goodness, y'all. But he turned out cute. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, again, got a little issue over here on the foot with the registration. Can you see I've got a little white spot? Uh, that is from that heavy fill. I've got, I forgot to put SF 101 on the back. I did put some on. It had already stitched like the bottom half. And then I went ahead and put some on the back behind the stabilizer. And I'm sure that helped quite a bit. He's still cute enough to put onto a pillow or uh, I don't know if I'd frame him. I'll have to see, but um, he's still cute enough to do something with, but I thought that was adorable. <laughs> Marsha, you're funny. She says she loves how I do all the work, figuring out how stuff is done. <laughs> Um, oh, that's a great idea. Uh, Scotty says to take the Christmas tree skirt with me. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Um, I will have, I think I have a luminaire in my booth, but I can certainly show how you can knock out that Christmas tree skirt easily or now. Yeah, easily and quicker. If you're using a multi-needle, that's for sure. So let me show you around this corner of my room. You guys don't get to see this very often. Uh, the door to go outside is right there on the side, okay? And then I've got a lot of little, there's a ton of little notions in there. And I have um, the collectible Christmas. I gotta show you guys. I talk about my dad all the time. You wanna see a picture? There is... Let me get it straight. Four generations. That's my dad and me and my son and my oldest grandson. He was about two right there. So kind of neat. That's my dad, Paul Stanfield. He was an Air Force uh, aircraft maintenance guy and a uh, huge influence in my life. Just huge. Miss him dearly. He passed in 14. So and then over here. I've got, um, I've got my uh, shadow box. My husband made my shadow box when I retired from the Air Force. And it's got the American flag and all my little ribbons and all of that and all my crudiments and the Texas flag. And then um, I decoupaged all of my light switches in my room here when I moved into this room. And then this is Miss Texas. Um, she is a, a singer featherweight that was gifted to me by a benefactor of my channel, Lady M. And she sits here and she has, 
the, um, I don't know if you can see it. She has the Texas flag. Can you guys see the Texas flag kind of flying on her? Look at that. It's amazing. Oh. So I've got little stuff up here. Again, you guys know how I feel about tchotchkes. So, um, and she sits up there. I've got the case and everything. My husband made a special shelf for her. And then right here, this is a design that is the first successful thing I ever embroidered back in 2013, I think. This is, I have no idea where I got it, but I made it on my brother PE 770. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Yeah. Well, she got the name Miss Texas because she's a beauty queen, right? And still working fine. Yeah, still working. So, uh, and then down here, I have the Brother, this is the Brother Airflow 3000 Serger. And then this one is a, um, the, the one in the cover, that's a Janome, I think it's the 900, it's a cover stitch, 900 CPX, uh, fixing to be replaced with the Brother CV 3550, which is a serger and cover stitch all in one. So that's still in the box right over here. I haven't uh, pulled that one out to play with it yet. What am I hitting? I'm bumping into something. No, I'm not. So this is my corner. Yeah. And then there's a little pillow below the pictures of Keith and I. And that's a memory pillow I made of my dad's, one of his, a couple of his shirts. So pretty neat, pretty neat. So how do you tell people, do not call when I'm having coffee with Becky. <laughs> I've missed the last three days. You put the phone on do not disturb is what you do. You put it on do not disturb and you set it, you mark emergency callers, family, immediate family, right? Best friend, whatever, uh, as your favorites. And then do not disturb allows your favorites to come in. That's how you do that. <laughs> so if my phone rings before 8 a.m., uh, somebody's probably sick or dying, right? <laughs> So anyway, I want to show you guys how I'm going to do this. So let me explain what I got going on here. I have got exquisite 40 weight embroidery thread up here in the top of the machine. And for those of you who are like thinking about embroidery, you guys, this changes your world. Or if you have a combo machine and you don't have the embroidery arm on it, take it out put it on. You need to put the embroidery arm on before you turn the machine on because the machine, and it doesn't matter what brand you have. They're all the same. Um, <clears throat> Grammy's watching in the car outside of her office. Don't be late for work. It's not my fault. <laughs> You're funny. You guys are so funny. So just Put the arm on the machine and then turn the machine on and you'll get different screens and everything because the machine says, "Ooh, I'm going to embroider today. Yay. Hey, if you haven't already, please hit the thumbs up below the video. If you're on a TV, hit the up arrow on your remote. And uh, if you enjoy the content, please subscribe. We love having you here every day. This is a lot of fun. Every weekday, I should say. Yeah. So... Thank you, Catherine. Yeah, she says, first time, Julie. Well, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Catherine says her dining room turns into my sewing room. You know, yesterday, um, a lady, uh, she watches Emily. She emailed me asking me about a long arm. And she told me, she says, you know, is it worth Here's my size room, blah, blah, blah. I said, well, if you put a long arm in that room, that'll last for about a year till you take over the formal dining room because nobody comes over anymore anyway, right? You might as well get the best use out of it. <laughs> Hi, Kim. You're not late. You're fine. Yeah. Okay. So get your embroidery arm out. If you have a combo machine, if you have an embroidery machine, take it out, turn it on, just get to know it a little bit. And if it's a brother machine, um, the buttons are pretty much all of the same. It's, if it's a brother or a baby lock, the buttons are all of all the same as a regular sewing machine. And the only difference is mechanically is that it is moving the fabric for you as opposed to you having control over it with your hands. 
So there are a few other things that you need to play with on these. So what I'm going to do, so if you're, if you just got here, I'm working on a sample for Houston, the Houston International Quilt Festival. So see, it says Merry Christmas to all. And the pattern designer would like you to hand stitch that. And I'm not going to do that. So I have, oh, Donna Marie says the video on the binding tool is perfect. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's not out for the general pop just yet because I've only got about three of them left. So there you go, Karen. She turned her formal living room into her sewing room. Yeah, I would totally do that too. I would totally do that. Mm -hmm. My husband, so long as he's got a big room to sit and watch, well, that's what I did to my two car garage. This was a two car garage and I converted it. Mm -hmm. The cars hang out in the carport outside. So, you know, we never had cars in here anyway. So, um, because I don't want any, uh, puckering at all, I do have SF 101 ironed Pellons SF 101 is on the back of this fat quarter. Okay. And then what did I do with my stabilizer? I've got a bubble. Oh my goodness. What is going on? Look at that. I got a wrinkle in my stabilizer. That's not good. Let me fix that. <clears throat> Here's the beauty of a, this is a, that's a dime designs, a machine embroidery, magnetic hoop. That thing is the bomb y'all. This is the nine by 14. I need to straighten this back out. So I'm just going to lift the edge of the hoop and figure out what's going on here. Another thing, if you're a quilter, you can finish your quilts in your embroidery machine. Designs by Juju has hundreds of end-to-end -end quilting designs you can do in your embroidery machine. It will change your world. And if you're crazy enough, you can even do a full-size queen or king quilt in there. You know, it's I've got videos on her on my channel. And um, she has videos underneath my video underneath every one of her designs to tell you how to do it. So this is how you rehoop, right? Ah, how about that? The plastic piece is over across the way. You don't want to pinch your fingers. You guys, I got to tell you something. I'm so excited about this. This luminaire is on a piece of crap table from Ikea. See how this shakes? Look at that. See how it shakes? That's horrible. I have solved that problem. I have, this thing had to be mounted to the wall and Keith just unmounted it yesterday because I'm shooting a video. I'm doing a um, promo for a company called Flexi Spot. They make these tables. And generally the tables are for like gamers. You know, kids that are sitting around, kids, now they're adults, sitting around playing video games all day. Because, But this table's automatic. It raises up and down and everything. It's sitting right over here to my right. Keith put it together yesterday. This thing is solid. And I wanted it specifically for my luminaire. I don't like that the luminaire is sitting so close to the edge, but I've got to have the space to allow this big arm to go, be able to go all the way back to the window if it needs to. So... Uh, that thing's here and I can't wait. I've got to make a video on it for flexi spot. They, uh, they promoted, you know, they were gracious enough. So yeah, I know the feet are adjustable. Y'all I'm, like I said, I'm in a garage. I'm at the slope right here on this end of the, of the slab. And it kind of, you know, it does that. I know. So anyway, so here's what I'm going to do. I have got no show mesh stabilizer in my hoop. Now it doesn't have a wrinkle. That's cool. I'm glad I looked at the back. And then I've got SF 101 on the back of the fabric. Now this machine comes with a scanning mat, but little secret, it doesn't know that this is not the scanning mat. It thinks it's got a mat in there, so it doesn't know or care. 
I still use SF-101 and a stabilizer. Oh, yes, Connie, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do. SF-101 is a backing. It's not designed to be a stabilizer. So I'm going to pop this in here, and then I'm going to fold my, my fabric up out of the way. So what I'm doing here, inside of this phenomenal machine, this is the Brother XP3 Luminaire. Her name is Darla because my multi-needle's name is Spanky. Those of you of an age will appreciate that, right? And <clears throat> it's got a camera uh, right up under here. There's a camera underneath this outside light right there. And I wanted to see this Merry Christmas to all. So I could not take a picture of Merry Christmas to all and put it into a brilliance because the rest of this image is in the way and I can't whack out just that image. And when I tried to digitize it, I got more nodes than I knew what to do with. Okay. I'm going to touch the screen, get my little scissors out of the way. So when you first have the screen here, you've got sewing, embroidery, Disney, and my design center. So this is standard, everything sewing. This is if the design was already done, like if it was a designs by Juju design or OESD or anywhere, I need a good design, pop it in either on a USB on the side of the machine or send it over wirelessly or something, any, any number of ways to get the design here. And then here's all the Disney designs. That's where I got Mr. Winnie the Pooh from <clears throat> and my design center. And that's designed for, um, digitizing to create designs from nothing. And that's what I want to do. So I'm going to touch my design center. Okay. To recall and resume previous memory. No, I'm going to tell it cancel. So here's my design center. I want to zoom you guys in so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to scooch this over. There we go. I'm going to show y'all. Okay. Now, across here, you've got a bunch of icons. I really only use the home button. And then we've got a percentage for viewing. We have a hand to be able to pan around on the screen. We've got a little leaf right here. That's a scanning button. And then the pocket is for memory. You've got a very light gray grouping of buttons right here. That's for drawing. We've got a light gray grouping of buttons right here. That is for fill. We have an eraser and we have shapes. And then the rest of them are grayed out. Cancel, all clear, memory, and next. So I want to take a picture of what's in the hoop. So I'm going to touch my leaf and I'm going to tell it line design. And see, this is a picture of the scanning mat. It doesn't know I don't have the scanning mat in. I'm just going to tell it scan. And it says the frame's going to be moved around with the built-in camera. I'm going to tell it okay. All right, here we go. Ooh, this is hard work, y'all. <laughs> oh, hard. Ooh. <laughs> Very busy. <clears throat> if you guys have a Luminaire and you haven't played with this, you need to take it out. Now, the, the Stellar does the same thing, but you have to take a picture of it with your phone and pop it into the app and then send it over to the machine. And you can do the same thing. The Stellar is the Luminaire's baby sister. Don't catch the paper. There we go. All right. What do we got on the screen? Let's see. Sometimes you have to do this. Let's see what we've got. We're going to zoom in. Oh, my goodness. Okay. It's too big for the screen to see all of it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do, <clears throat> I'm going to do Mary first. <clears throat> well, I could actually move, I think I'm going to move the image a little bit more the um, up. See, I, I want to get the S and the all, the L. Can you, let me show you guys. Can you see? See how it's just. So I'm going to move this pattern a little bit 
I've got a, a half an inch or so up top I can do. I'm going to move it a little bit this way. And then it might work. That is 11.81 by 8.65. That should, that should work. You know, if I put it in a larger frame, that would work too. I'm going to tell it cancel. I'm going to scan it again. There. You know, you got to play around with it. It's fine. Diane, I've got your mug rug here next to my machine. I met Diane from Australia on a cruise. She gave that to me. So when I prepped the fabric, y'all, I used Magic's Premium Quilting and Crafting Spray. Oh. And that has a fabric relaxer in it. There's no scent and it doesn't flake. It's really nice. I gotta get some more coffee. Okay, there we. Oh, there's my finger. Dang it! <laughs> that's hilarious. Ah, oh, that's funny. Okay, I'm gonna push this down. Una más. <laughs> I'm gonna do it one more time. That's the right spot. <laughs> but it had a picture of my finger in there. The camera caught it. <laughs> Yeah, Connie, Connie's Luminaire is in the shop. Uh-oh. Tape turned loose. Stay down. Okay, good. Did I get a picture without my finger over the letters? Let's see. Yes. Woohoo. Success. <laughs> Third time's a charm, y'all. <laughs> there we go. Look at that. See? That looks great. All right. What stabilizer am I using? Eileen wants to know. Eileen, I, you know what? I'm going to tell y'all a secret. That stabilizer is from Brothread. And I get it off of Amazon. It's dirt cheap and it works great. And it doesn't shrink when it gets steamed. Okay. I love it. Why don't I use my scanning mat? Because I'm lazy, Cindy. I'd have to fish it out, right? Because the scanning mat has magnets that'll hold that down. But you, you guys know that's not how I am. Okay, so I've got a grayscale detection button down here. You would use that if things weren't, uh, if you couldn't see all of the letters very clearly. So I've got Santa's uh, head and hat here. I'm going to take my little arrow. Let me back out so you guys can see the whole picture of what I'm doing. Okay. I'm going to take the little arrow and I'm going to move it just to the bottom of the L Right about there. Let go. Okay. <clears throat> I'll go maybe a little bit darker. Let me see. Okay. I like that. Now my letters are nice and bright and I can see them really well. And I still have some of Santa's head in here. We're going to get rid of that. I'm gonna, so it wants to know, is this what you want me to digitize. So I'm going to tell it, okay. Now I've got a little smaller, like a stylus. I'm going to tell it set. And then remember I told you down here, there's an eraser. So I'm going to hit my eraser. I want to get rid of, because if it sees whatever it sees on here, it's going to create a stitch for it. So I'm going to hit the eraser and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger for now. And I'm just going to touch and erase. That's not big enough. 
I'm going to touch and erase these lines that I do not want to be stitched that are all in there. Y'all, I could not have threaded a needle by now. I'm telling you. <laughs> this is the way to go. <laughs> all right. That looks good. Pretty happy with everything there. Yep, I like it. I'm going to tell it okay. All right. So now I need to tell it I want what kind of line that I want to this to be made out of. So remember I told you this one up here is lines for drawing and this group down here is for a fill. So I'm going to hit the, the drawing line, the pencil. And let me hit what kind. So I want it to be where it will go around the curve of the R. So you've got a drawing and you've got free hand and you've got a line and you've got a zigzag. And this is going to be a little tiny zigzag stitch. It's perfect. I want it in black and that's fine. I'm going to tell it okay. And now I'm going to tell it next. So now it's digitizing. Oh, look at that. My Frito came in or she started to and then she didn't. Now, this is a little bit dark, a little bit wide for me. So I'm going to touch the stitch width. You've got stitch width and stitch length and it's um, 0 0.080. I'm going to touch that and go down to that's the lowest it'll go is 0 0.040 and tell it OK. That looks amazing. So I'm going to hit set. And it says converted to the embroidery pattern and my design center will be exited. OK, to continue to embroidery edit screen. So now we're going to jump out of design center because I'm all finished with it. Let me back up. You guys see how, oh, man, that was stressful to get all that done. Yeah. <laughs> how fun. All right. So I'm just going to remove this now. I've got black thread already in here and I use designs in machine embroidery, class A style 15, my plastic bobbins. Okay. They're pre-wound 130 yards of size. This is a 70 weight. That's what I like is a 70 weight. I have another tube in here. That's a 60 weight. I don't guess it matters. I'm going to tell it. Okay. And I'm ready to go. I'm going to hit embroidery. And we're done. It's ready to stitch. Now I want y'all to admire my hand stitching when we're done, okay? <laughs> ah! All right. There we go. That's how I roll you guys. The only downside of doing embroidery together is that um, we've got the machine rearing, rearing in the background. So, Connie, what? She says, Becky, what? <laughs> I'm watching now. Can you do the same thing on the 1055? Why, yes, Miss Judy, you can. Yes, you can. <laughs> You certainly can. I have done it. So anytime you have a design where, like I've got a, a block that's got a bumblebee, applique bumblebee on it, and it's got the little dash line of where the bumblebee has been flying. Okay. Yes. Exact same. What are you doing? Oh, you're doing the little, this thing's shaking, but that's okay. You love that sound. Yeah. So. Check the whole text. Oh, it's fine. It, are you talking about the dot above the eye? It made a little French knot. <laughs> Can you do it on the Quattro? Evelyn, no, you cannot. So the Quattro does have a camera system, but that is for design placement only. The Quattro does not have the brains to be able to digitize what it sees. So that's kind of a thing. Now, if you've got the tablet that 
that came with, um, <clears throat> it was upgrade one or two on the Quattro. You could put the paper over the tablet and draw with the pen and digitize that way. You know, you got to connect that plat that tablet that came with the machine. So I decreased the letter M. No, 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 I did not. No, it did the whole thing. You're right, it did. That's okay. I'll show you how to fix that. I actually like it darker. Why didn't it do the whole thing? <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you guys, this is what my life is like. This is exactly what my life is like. Day to day. I make a mistake and I got to go do it. I got to do it again. You guys are screaming, Connie screaming at me. You only did the am, do the whole thing. That's fine. <laughs> <clears throat> the Dream Machine 2. So now you can use that feature. I'm not entirely sure the Dream Machine will digitize an image. If it does, I haven't played with it. I think the Dream Machine, yeah, you does it use the tablet too? I'm not sure. So how I'm going to fix that is I actually like the, uh, I actually like the larger stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scan it again. Okay. I'm going to leave it exactly in the embroidery frame where it is. I'm going to scan it again. I'm going to digitize it again and I'm going to digitize and leave the M as the, 0 0.080 and then just stitch over the M one more time and then I'll be finished. <laughs> I didn't notice it either, Lynn. <laughs> it does. It looks amazing. Let me show you guys. I like it better. Look. I like it better. You can see it. I like it a lot better. Yeah, there's a workaround all the time. Always a workaround, y'all. That's the thing about machine embroidery. It is so incredibly forgiving. Unless you have um, removed the project from the hoop or the hoop popped open or something like that, it can be fixed, believe it or not. And people are so intimidated by embroidery, you guys, but no. <clears throat> This is what it's going to look like right here. I've already cut out all of my pieces for Santa on my scan and cut. I just took this pattern and ran it into the scan and cut using the scanning mat. I used that paper tape. <clears throat> you guys, I get this paper tape 3M. Whenever somebody tells you to use embroidery tape, okay, they mean paper tape. From 3M, you can get 12 rolls of it for like 10 bucks on Amazon. From 3M, the good stuff, I'm telling you. So, FYI. So this is the scanning mat. This is the, this is the brother scanning mat. It's black. It doesn't have any sticky on it at all. It has a flap to keep out all of that stuff. So, I just pop this under here. like this. Actually, it wasn't this one. Let's see. I'm going to make Jolly next. I'm going to make, I think, a couple of potholders from the Jolly. I think that's so cute. Here we go. So here's his, there's his coat and his little hat. <laughs> Jeannie, girl, I'll tell you, 
Y'all, there's only a couple of companies in the world that make all of the products that we use. And there's a lot of these embroidery companies that have their name on something, but they don't make tape. <laughs> so this is how I scanned in those pieces. And then I did it just a hair darker on the recognition and then it found them perfectly and I uploaded them to Brother Canvas. So. Fran, you made it. Good for you, my friend. You're here. Yep. You mean from the Becky Amazon store? Yes. Catherine, there is, I have a link to my Amazon store below in the description box. You X out of the chat and then go down there and it says my Amazon store. I put it up near the top to so make it easier for you guys to find. And then you cringe when you see instructors use straight pins on their embroidery machines. I do use them, but I only use them if they're on the edge of the fabric and way out of the embroidery field, way out. And one way you can do that on a machine like the Luminaire is to, um, if it's got a scanner in it, is to go ahead and scan it and make sure that the pin heads, it'll see the pin heads and they're way out. So, oh, you bought the Embrilliance with my, good, good, awesome. That's wonderful. Well, Evelyn says she learned so much from this channel. Evelyn, I hope you've learned you need a new machine. <laughs> no, your quattro's fine. Your quattro's just fine. <laughs> I like that. I think the, uh, the larger stitch, you know what? Sometimes things happen for a reason, right? Yep. What were you thinking that I don't have to rescan it? Um, hold on. Cindy, what did you say? Let me scroll up. You can save it to your machine and make changes if needed. Yeah, but I'm digital. I've got to change the stitch width. I, I, I did not save it. I did not save it after the scan. I don't think that I can change. Can I change the stitch width? Evelyn, she's got the bug. She says Christmas is coming. Yeah, you guys, dealers are going to have amazing... I tell you what, <clears throat> I had a dealer tell me, Evelyn, that, um, well, Pamela, I make it look easy because it is. It's super easy. Scan the shirt into the Lumi and then to the scan and cut. Is that what I said, Joan? No. So I scanned the paper pattern into the scan and cut because I wanted to cut out the fabric. Where's my fabric? Let me get it. So here are all of his pieces for his shirt. This is my Santa right down here. That's what I'm doing right there. So here's his shirt and his beard and his mittens. I'm missing a mitten because I was playing with this today on a, a class I was doing with a lady. Christmas deals, brother said, yes, yes, yes. So brother is gonna have big deals come Christmas, um, usually around the Thanksgiving time frame. They will do excellent deals and pricing and um, all of that. Uh, most dealers are, if you're a Janome fan or something like that. <clears throat> oh, the brother guy said people are holding on to those quattros and dream machines because they have cameras in them and people aren't letting them go. So if you turn one in, like if you trade in your quattro, you get top dollar for that. And how you know how much you should get, go to eBay and see what they're selling for on eBay. And then don't let them give you a penny less than that. Is what you're doing now the same thing I did to get the face sewn out? Yes, ma'am. That's exactly what I'm doing. So here's the little face she's talking about. I scanned in his face on the paper pattern. 
He's hold on. He's got a unibrow between his eyes. I gotta <laughs> let me clip that stitch. <clears throat> Give you guys a little tip about jump stitches. So let me show you what I'm talking about. When designs are very, very close together, see how we there's a little, see how there's a little stitch between the eyes. See that? That's called a jump stitch. It finished this eye and it jumped to over here. Okay, so it's called a jump stitch. Most Higher end embroidery machines or well digitized designs will cut the jump stitch, but if it's really, really tiny, they don't. So, and this is really, really tiny. Machines embroider from left to right and top to bottom. Okay. So that means this jumped from the right eyeball over to his left eyeball. So that means the tension of the stitch, it started left and it went right. So if you are going to clean up jump stitches, always trim the right side first. And what that will do is the natural tension of the jump stitch will make that little tiny thread pop up and then you can get it. If you trim from the left side first, it'll kind of lay down because there's no tension on that thread anymore. So what you do, and if you have a poorly digitized design, you will be very grateful for this tip, okay? These are Revlon eyebrow tweezers, they're the best. And then these are from More, these little snips. So I trim it from the right eye first and see how that thread stood up. See it standing up right there. I can grab it now and I can trim it just like that. See how clean that is? That looks great. Well, so you wanna trim against the direction of the embroidery to make those jump threads stand up with the natural tension between. Are you done? Well, good. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you, Darla. Just beautiful. All right, I gotta figure. You know, I saw that red box around the M and I was like, <laughs> okay. So I don't know. No, I can't. I cannot edit the stitches. I can't edit the stitches in regular embroidery mode, which is where we are. Is there an embroidery only machine that Citizen Grace? I I think there's a typo. I'm not sure I understand. Okay. Yeah, Eileen, that the Baby Lock Destiny is the equivalent of the Brother Dream machine. Yeah. And the camera is wonderful in that machine because if you've got multiple designs that you need to nest or get them together, you can move things everywhere. It's great. Yeah, absolutely. So you just, yeah, you just can't, um, what, what am I talking about? You cannot digitize on the Destiny or the quattro or dream machine you the only way to do that like the writing is to use that tablet that came with it so i need to fix the m and get it at the 0 0.080 stitch width so i'm just going to go to home and show you guys we're going to fix this let's see if we can fix it if we can't well <laughs> it's fine not a big deal so see how my M is a little lighter than everybody else. So I'm going to go home, tell it okay. I'm going to go to my design center and I want to scan and I'm going to do a line design and scan and okay. And it did do that little dot. I'll pick that out. 
I don't know what that's from. It saw something on the screen. I'll have to pick that out. So it's scanning again. We'll see if this works. <laughs> yes, the Stellaire will do that. It sure will. I should have saved a design center, Carla says. Yep, that's my life, Carla. This is how we go. That Kim, that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm going back to the stitches to get the M. But I didn't save it. I never do. I should, but I don't. All right. I didn't even see that little stitch. It it stitched something right up here above this R, and I cannot see it on the screen. So that'll be easy enough to pick out. All right. I'll just tell it okay. Oh, that's not good. Return up. And... It's got lots of little dits and dots on it now. I'm going to tell it set. I need my eraser. Okay, now, see, I've made this harder on myself, you guys. <laughs> Again, story of my life. This is what I do. Let me in here so you can see what I'm doing. Um, I'm going to erase... Let me make this bigger. Okay, I'm going to erase the E and these little dots that are out here that the machine will convert those to stitches. You got to be careful about that. That's what happened. And I'm going to hit the zero and, or the 100. I'm going to go to 200 and my hand, I'm going to pan it down. I've got a couple of little dits Whoop. right there and right there. Okay. I think that'll work. Okay. I'm going to tell it next. All right. I'm going to tell it. There we go. Tell it set. Okay. And embroidery. <laughs> you know what? You guys, this is exactly how I learn how to use this machine is I make mistakes and then I figure out workarounds and that's how you don't ruin your projects. Let me see if it worked. If it didn't work, it didn't work, but I think it's going to work. I think it's going to work. <laughs> yep. Don't be afraid to make a mistake on these, you guys. thread it's only fabric it's not what quilting marine says yep good save <laughs> all right so when it gets finished i'm gonna stop it and i'm gonna be done And it's a good thing I've got SF-101 on the back of this fabric. Otherwise, we'd have a puckered hot mess. Huh? You're having an issue, Bernadette's having an issue with puckering on projects. Is it better to have your fabric real taut or not? Yes. I've done both and still have the issue. Also use magnetic. Yes. SF-101, Bernadette. It's a little lumpy, but I'm okay with it. Let me let it cut. Nope, stop. Oh, it said finished embroidering. Okay. I think that's all right. You guys like that? I don't want to hold it real close so you'll see all the lumps. <laughs> It's okay. It's a little lumpy there on the M. And this was something it saw on the screen that I did not see. So I'm going to pull that out. 
But see how I don't have any puckering, Bernadette? It's because I've got Pelon's SF-101 on the back of the project. I learned to do that from Kimberbell. Kimberbell loves to put SF-101 on the back of their embroidery. Anytime you've got a heavy satin stitching and lettering like this. Now, if you've only, if, if you've only doing it, like I'll do like on my chicken salad quilt, I had just blanket stitches going around the shapes. You really don't need it because that's not a heavy pull. But when you've got satin like this and like this, this is puckered. It does have SF 101 on the back, but it puckered one because it's in a dime magnetic hoop and I should have known better, but it's still salvageable. I'm going to put it on a pillow or something. All right. But this is a heavy, heavy satin fill. That's how this works. So, and then, uh, yeah, Pam, I do too. I buy it by the bolt. SF 101, buy it by the bolt. So, so now I've got uh, a good idea of where my Santa's going to go on my fat quarter, okay? Don't put the Santa on first. I want to put the lettering on first. And now I've got all my pieces for my Santa back here, and I can put him on. And if you guys want, tomorrow morning... I'll just show y'all, I'll share my screen and show you guys how I do this. Do I have two layers of stabilizer as well as 101? No, ma'am. Yeah, you iron the SF-101 onto the back of your background fabric, not your applique fabric. The applique fabric has heat and bond light on the back of it. I think this is going to work out fine. I'm good with it, yeah? Well, this was an interesting hour. <laughs> this is how I roll, y'all. <laughs> so you want me to show it tomorrow, Cindy? I'll be happy to. I'll be happy to. You guys are getting private lessons here in the situation room. How about that? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So tomorrow I will uh, put my Santa mostly together and I'll save the last couple of pieces and I'll bounce into Stitch Artist 2 and show you guys how I um, finish him up. Well, I'll do everything but the hat because it takes a minute to sit there and play around. Judy, you know, you were, Judy, back, you were in my, uh, took a private lesson with me. Any, any bumps will what? will make your work look like it's handmade. Yeah, right, Margie. <laughs> it is handmade. I didn't buy that, right? I didn't go over to Hobby Lobby and get that. I made it. Oh, a little tip too. If you want, you don't have to, depending on your background fabric, like if it was white, okay? Um, if you want to trim these threads, uh, the little tails, see the tails? You can trim the tails, just don't trim the knots. You don't want to do that. Evelyn found my brilliance videos as well. Good, yeah. So... Um, this, this is going to work out. I love it. I'm going to, I'm going to pick this little guy out too. So, well, thanks for sticking around with me this morning and helping me get my sample ready. Um, I hope to see you in Houston at the International Quilt Festival, be in the All Brands booth. And, uh, I think this is it for today. I've got to do some, about 20 minutes worth of work on my American Pie Blocks so that I don't fall behind on that. But uh, all right, you guys, I will talk to you tomorrow. I hope you can join me. We'll see you soon. You guys go say something. Bye.